This video is installation support to be used in conjunction with written instructions found in our kits. We hope that it'll help guide you through your installation. If, after viewing this video, you find that you are not confident in your mechanical abilities or do not have the necessary tools, please seek a professional installer. This is how your new kit should look, boxed and sealed. Be sure to check the part number on the label to be certain that it is the correct kit for your application. Remove the staples with needle nose pliers. You can save the box for your stock parts storage. Remove the hex bar and set it aside. Then remove the packing. Be sure to check that no parts are in it. Set it aside. Inside you'll find sealed parts bags, bag of parts and hardware, a bag of gaskets, linkage support brackets, air cleaners, manifolds, and of course the carburetors. Lay everything out on a clean work surface, separate and count all the hardware pieces so you are confident that everything is there and within easy read. Ampi offers a few styles so your air cleaner may be the new Ultra, the deluxe billet look, or chrome steel. Linkage supports can be cast or steel. Manifolds will be standard or the Ultra offset manifolds. Read and study the instructions before beginning installation. If you have any questions or doubt your ability, now's the time to take your car and kit to a professional. Study the diagrams and check to be certain that all the components are accounted for. You will need a good service manual for instruction removing all stock components as well as torque specs for installing your new kit. Our instructions are based on an engine in stock condition. If you've made other modifications, some steps may not apply and some steps may need to be added. Instructions 1 through 20 deal with the removal of your stock components. Use your service manual in conjunction with our instructions. This video does not cover parts removal. Just a reminder, before you begin your project, disconnect your battery. Install the studs into the intake manifolds. Run them in until you feel them just coming through the other side. If you've purchased a complete MP kit, you'll find that we've installed the throttle levers for you. Install the flange gaskets onto the manifolds. Do not use any gasket sealer. Then the carburetors. Make sure to use the wave washers and do not over tighten the hold down nuts. 12 to 14 pounds max. Install the center pull lever, then the left and right extension arms onto the hex bar. There should be approximately 60 degrees between the center line of the arms compared to the center pull lever. Install the retention hardware onto the parts but do not tighten at this time. Install the jam nuts onto the ball ends, then thread the ball ends into each end of the hex bar.
Your engine is probably in your car, so your install will not be as simple as it looks here. Take your time and make certain the manifold sits squarely on the cylinder heads. The intake manifold gaskets supplied feature extra material so that they can be cut to match custom cylinder heads and ported manifolds. They will require some trimming. This mating sealing surface is critical to engine operation. Make certain that the cylinder head surface is clean and straight, that the gaskets fit flush on the head, and that the cylinder tin does not interfere. No gasket sealer is needed. To prevent from tearing the gaskets, take your time. I use a long socket to help push the gasket around the studs. Install the linkage support, air cleaner base, and velocity stacks on the left or driver's side car. Hold off installing the right side until later. If your kit features steel supports, it will require two gaskets, one between the support and the carburetor, the other between the support and the air cleaner base. The MP Ultra kit features a one-piece cast aluminum linkage support and air cleaner base. It requires one gasket. Next, install the Teflon sleeve onto the support. Now install the left side manifold and carburetor assembly on your engine. Use the lock washers and extra clearance brass nuts provided and torque this back. Now install the right side carbon manifold assembly in the same way and torque this back. And yes, assembling on this stand is much easier than in your engine bay. Take your time make sure you get a good seal from manifold to cylinder head. Next, reinstall the distributor cap and wires. Make certain that you maintain the correct firing order. Insert the left-hand centering spring and ball end of the hex bar assembly into the left bracket bushing. Install the linkage mount and air cleaner assembly on the right side carburetor. Do not bolt down the component. Install the centering spring and insert the ball end into the right bracket bushing. Once the hex bar has seated in the bushing, secure the assembly down using the lock washers and nuts provided. The hex bar and ball ends have been designed with sufficient thread length to accommodate cutting the bar if necessary or extending the bar ends out to gain proper installation. Adjust the hex bar ball ends to achieve 1 32nd inch clearance between the bushing flange and ball flange. Once the ball ends are adjusted correctly, lock the jam nuts in place. Double check to make sure all retaining nuts are secured. And that the hex bar has appropriate clearance on each side. The carburetor linkage arms are threaded left and right for the ease of adjustment. The ball ends are marked left and right. Notice there's a long and short arm extension. Install the jam nuts, then the ball ends, onto the threaded hex rod.
then the linkage arm extensions onto the ball ends. The linkage arm with the long extension will be assembled on the left or driver's side, the short extension on the right. Install the carburetor linkage rods to each of the extension arms on the hex bar. Then the spacers to the carburetor throttle levers, adjusting the rod as necessary. Location of the hex bar arm should be almost to the end of the bar so down rods are centered vertically. Adjust the hex rod so that while the linkage is in the neutral position, there's no pressure on the carburetor throttle arms. Once your adjustment is complete, tighten the locking nuts on the hex bar. Check that the ball ends are straight to reduce binding. Check throttle operation for free movement. If there are any indications of sticking or binding, correct as necessary before proceeding. Confirm that when the linkage is in the neutral position, your butterflies are completely closed. And at wide open throttle, they're wide open. Now go back over and make sure all your hardware is secure, tightened to spec. Some of our kits include additional return springs. Install them at this time. Follow the remainder of the written instructions, including installation of fuel line and fuel filter. You're now ready to synchronize and adjust your carburetors. Watch our tuning video. After your carburetor synchronizing and adjusting is completed, install your air cleaners, then proceed with throttle cable installation, and follow the balance of the written instructions. On our engine, we chose to use the empty billet combo fuel pump block off and coil mount. A standard coil mount comes with the kit. After your throttle cable is installed, be sure to check for a wide open throttle. If you're not getting full throttle, the center pull lever can be rotated. 